Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this inbox review of Tamiya's M10 Tank Destroyer mid-production. Reference number 35350. So this kit came out in 2016, so this is a completely up-to-date Tamiya release. So this kit was very kindly sent to me by Scale Modeling Now. So I've already done a little bit of uh, collaboration work with them on their, um, basically it's an online model magazine so i'll have a link in the description if you want to check that out some very very high quality tutorials and um, articles on that and i'll just be doing a, a few um video tutorials for them and this is going to be uh, one of their projects so we're, we're going to take this m10 tank destroyer and we're going to turn it into uh, kind of an advanced project following on from the styre truck that i did with them at the same time so either you'll see it on you'll see a boat on there uh, site and on my channel too so don't worry guys you're not getting left out from any content if you choose not to, uh, to subscribe to the, to the uh, magazine so don't worry so uh, let's see what we get in the box so first we have a quick look at the box itself we have our standard Tamiya art very simple kind of a rear view of the vehicle nice nice and simple they don't have the most exciting box arts in my opinion like uh, some people really like Tamiya box arts I'm not the biggest fan of them then we have some photographs of our turret crew. So we get a commander, a loader, and a gunner. We get just a side photo with various details, such so as reference number. And then we get a photo of one of the marking options. So let's crack open the box and show you what we get. So this kit does come pre-packaged in plastic bags, like stapled plastic bags. I've already tried to make this video in several takes, so I've already unbagged them. Let's have a proper look at the details and see what we get. So starting with the instructions, these are our standard Tamiya style. We get the colors that we need. These are all obviously Tamiya uh, acrylic colors, I believe. And we also have some like, recommended tools as well as our cautions, you know, how not to murder yourself with your model and so on and so forth. So kind of different to most um, Sherman kits. We actually start with the assembly of the hull tub first. It does have a partial interior because the turret is an open top turret on the M10. So this is a little bit reminiscent of an Asuka or Tasca model Sherman which starts off by putting the individual hull plates together. So we do have a partial turret, um, hull floor here. Uh, step two we're going on to uh, the transmission cover or the differential cover. A rear panel with our exhaust system. Three, we're adding more lower uh, details and then mounting the rear plates. Five, we have um, mounting our idler tensioners, our deflector for the exhaust, and then onto the running gear. The running gear seems to be somewhat different. I haven't seen them build running gear like this before, and I'm not entirely sure if this is workable or not. So um, we'll see that when we get to the build. I think it might be locked in place. I haven't built um, a Tamiya Sherman chassis in about 10 years, so I can't remember how their um, M4A3 went together. And this is not quite the same chassis either, so it's still a Sherman family chassis, but I don't think it's the M4A3 one. I believe it might be an A2 chassis that they're like repurposed. Then we're adding our suspension, the buggies. Now I tend to leave these off and paint these separately and then add them into the kit. Just It just makes ease, um, ease of painting. So I'll mask off these areas, uh, paint everything separately and then glue them on before I weather the, the, the vehicle. Adding our final tracks, so we don't get link to link on this. These are final and they're okay. We'll have a look at those in a few moments. Step 12, we're moving on to mounting the details into the upper hull. So we have a, a, a partial turret ring we also have what looks like a firewall with a looks like a cleaning rod set for the, the main gun. And then we go on to the sponsons. And the sponsons are pretty simple. However, they do have two large ammunition um, ammo ready racks for the APC or armor piercing composite ammunition. Then we move on to step four, or sorry, should I say step 14? And then we, have, we are adding the rear plate. However, it does have a drill hole, so make sure you study the instructions several times to make sure you don't miss any of those. It's very easy to do that if you charge through a Tamiya kit. 
Step 15, we're adding the bolt heads to the armor bosses. Stick steam, again, more upper hulls, such as the headlights, brush guards, filling caps, travel lock for the um, three inch gun, which is based, the three inch and the 76 mil gun are more or less the same gun. However, they don't take the same ammunition. I think there's a point of a mil in the difference. So a 76 mil gun on a Sherman could not fire three inch ammunition, even though they're very, very close. Uh, I remember the chieftain was explaining the difference. I just can't think of it right now as tank destroyers are a little bit out of my field of knowledge. However, it's sort of very pretty machine. I do love the M10, it's very cool. Then we're adding these, I believe these are track um, cleats, perhaps, I'm not entirely sure there. They look like track cleats. And they go onto racks on the rear of the vehicle. Step 17, we're mating the upper and lower hull. So make sure you paint the interior of the hulls before you put them together, or it'll make life very difficult to try to paint those in situ. Step 18, your co-driver and driver's hatches can be modeled open and shut. We don't get any crewmen for those hatches for some reason. Even though Tamiya have quarter, um, quarter sized crewmen, basically just like their head and shoulders. And even though they're quite old, those um, figures, they're actually quite good. The facial details are better on some of those figures and some of the newer stuff. So it's strange that they didn't add those, but fair enough. Step 19, we're adding the Pioneer tools to the rear plate of the vehicle, as well as our convoy lights. lights. And then from this point on, we're going to be really focusing on the turret. So step 20, gun breach mechanisms. Add 21 further, further with the gun breach. Step 22, we're moving on to the interior of the turret, which is in two parts, so it's sandwiched together. So we do get some markings for the APC red, um, ready ammo. So we do get like a little marking, that, that should be nice. This is actually very nice detail inside this. Actually looks, it should build up very nicely indeed. However, I would recommend perhaps painting the various halves together before mating them. Again, to make painting more straightforward. 23, again, more hull um, or turret interior detail, should I say. Again, um, some more ammo ready racks. And then 24, we're mating both the gun breech and then the two um, turret sides together. 25, we're onto the big distinctive counterweights on the rear of the turret. 26, we're adding, um, I believe these are for a tarpaulin. They're basically like, um, like a collapsible uh, rod, if you will. Uh, then with the turret roof or like the partial turret roof of the gun mantlet that comes down, then the mantlet itself. We do get a one piece gun barrel, which we'll have a look at in a few minutes. And step 28 then we're actually, that's like the final step of the, at least of the vehicle build, where we're mating the turret to the hull. And then, oh. Then 29 is the crew. Crew are standard Tamiya. They're actually pretty okay. We'll have a look at those in more detail in a few moments. We get commander with the standard, I'm looking through binoculars uh, pose because I'm an officer and that's all officers ever seem to do. I would, I would much have rather the more dynamic pose for him. He's the one that kind of ruins it for me. Um, the gunner and the loader are, are actually, they're sound, they're fine, they look great. Uh, they're not that bad even for Tamiya mod. Uh, Tamiya figures aren't always great, but these look okay actually. And then it gives you like the positioning of both the gunner and the loader and how to actually align the various um, mechanisms within the turret for them to actually sit naturally. So very, very, very clear instructions, as we've come to expect from Tamiya. These should not lead you astray in any way. Step 33, we're adding our 0.5 machine gun, which is the same 0.5 for the last 20 years. Um, I think we've been using the same 50 cal mold for at least 25 odd years, really from the early 90s. It's probably as old as I am. And then we go on to our marking guides. I'm going to get two marking options. We get marking option A, um, 634th Tank Destroyer Battalion, 1st Infantry Division, Aiken or Aachen, Germany, October 1944. So this is from the Horton Forest, I believe. And I actually, I've seen some brilliant photographs of these machines in the Horton. And I'll actually probably model in our project um, a machine from the Horton Forest, full of stowage, um, um, foliage, camouflage, and full of mud. Because that's one of the things you want to try to create some mud for some more advanced. Uh, modeling techniques and then 
Option B is 601st Tank Destroyer Battalion, 3rd Infantry Division, sold from France, August 1944. So this is Operation Dragoon, which is the um, invasion of southern France. This is actually quite nice. I do like the uh, tactical numbering on the um, on the rear of the counterbalances, which is a nice one too. They're very simple, but these are solid instructions. Then we get uh, inf an information pamphlet in several languages, uh, including English, of course. And we just get a very brief overview of the vehicle, which is grand if you don't really know much about the M10. Like me, I'd read this and kind of figure out a little bit more about this machine. So let's get down to the plastic. So the upper hull, hopefully you guys can see, is one piece, very nicely detailed. Again, this, this mold is only a few months old, so I'm not expecting to see any type of problem or trouble with this. We get, this looks like a really like an M4A2 style engine deck, at least with the small, um, the small covers here. Because often that's what they do, they just take um, and reuse the lower hulls. Again, I could be wrong there, but it, it kind of seems that's what they've done. Again, a lot of pin marks inside here, if you're not going to see any of that, that's fine. A really nice detail, very solid. At the end of the day, this was a well design, so it's not going to be a lot going on on it. And then we have the locator tabs for the armor bosses to reinforce the hull. And we'll just get these out of the way now. These are, our, it's a bit hard to see unfortunately. These are our, our tracks. These are molded in very stiff vinyl. I don't have an issue with final tracks on vehicles like Sherman or Sherman chassis because of the fact that they have practically no suspension sag. They're like a live or living suspension so they're, they're always under tension. However, my issue with this is it's so stiff that I fear it might not um, conform to the sprocket and idler that well and it might want to try to force itself back into its original position. So we'll try building it out of the box and we'll see how we get on anyway. So that's just you know, probably the only real catch with this kit. On to the sprues. So we'll start with B sprue. So first thing we have is our large um, hull sides. Again, very reminiscent of an Asuka model um, Sherman kit with the separate lower hull. We have our, I think these are mud flaps here or um, mud skirts. We have some of our Pioneer tools. They look fine, they're, it's not really much to them. Again, most, most of the time these um, allied um, tool kits, for example, are kind of simple. You have various fire extinguishers. We have what looks like the actual main gun sight of the gunner for the, for the main weapon. Then we have the differential cover or um, transmission cover. There is a cast texture, but there's no foundry markings or any type of cast markings on, which is a bit disappointing. However, maybe the, these the M10s didn't have them, which I find highly unlikely. Most likely, of course, they had them because they are probably being built in the same factories, or at least these parts were being supplied from the same factories. So there should be probably be a cast numbering on this. However, there is a cast texture. It's a bit light, but you can feel it and. Um, you might get away with it. I might just add an extra bit of liquid putty just to bring that out more. So that's bee sprue. And we'll move on now to sea sprue. We have some more um, lower hip hull fittings. We have the rear um, hull plate here. And then a part of the firewall for the interior of the vehicle. Some nice details. They are quite simple details, but um, all I'm seeing is just uh, cooling lines in the plastic, but once you paint them, you're not going to see any of it. We have our rear engine deck with our very large um, radiators, and then we put our basically the exhaust then will fit in underneath this. And then we have our deflector, which is a really nice looking deflector, actually, did a really good job on that. Then we have our partial um, hull floor with a little bit of diamond pattern texture. It's grand, it's simple. Again, the third is going to be sitting over this. You're not going to see very much of that. Then we move on to our lower hull, 
or the bottom of the hole. And we do have actual detail on, on the uh, reverse side. We have our escape patches, various drainage plugs, as well as the access panels to the engine. Again, you're not going to see any of that, but it's always nice to have it just in case you want to do something funky for a diorama. Then we have our, our upper turret, which is in two pieces, which I suppose was necessary if you wanted to get your interior into it. Again, really nice detail, very sharp, quite crisp. And then we have the locating pins for the interior. So um, what I'm gonna probably do is I'll paint these individually and then make them together and then do any cleanup work I have to. So it takes some very careful gluing to make that work, but it's not impossible. And that is sea sprue. So there's not too many sprues, but there's a lot of parts in them. Then we move on to D sprue. And this is mostly turret details. So we have the um, mantle cover, the gun breech assembly, which is pretty nice. We do have our crewmen. The crewmen are quite nice actually for a Tamiya kit, they're fine. They're not as underscaled as Tamiya figures tend to be, which is always good. We get an assortment of personal weapons like um, Thompson submachine guns and 1911 Colts for the crewmen. We have some of our um, ammunition racks here for the APC ammunition. And speaking of APC ammunition, here we have some um, ready ammunition ready to go. We have our cleaning rod. Again, no flash, no defects as we'd expect for such a new Tamiya release. We do get a one piece barrel which has a hollow muzzle, uh, muzzle, no rifling. However, it's not, a, it's not a deal breaker for me. The fact that it's one piece is more than adequate. If only they had done that on the Rezi 8, it would, have been, it would have been marvelous. The heads also on the crew, which I'll draw your attention to, are separate. That is good because often the faces on these aren't great. So it's very easy now to replace those with resin heads, if you so wish. We have some ammunition stowage for the hull. So we get quite a bit of, there's a lot going on in these sprues. Our gun mantlet, which I believe is a cast piece. A very light cast texture on that gun mantlet. However, I might augment that with some liquid putty once more. And then we get a double sprue. And this is, I believe, A sprue. So we get a double of A. So we'll just take a look at one. So we have our sponson. Oh, sorry. We have our sponsons. Our partial turret ring with the mirror on the other sprue. So you get the full ring. We have our pressed steel road wheels, which the inserts go into the back. Again, very similar to Dragon um, road wheels for Sherman. We have our swing arms for our Fifi SS suspension system. Also the racks for the, the cleats or spare track links. The buggies themselves, which I'm kind of curious to see how the buggies um, come together. We have our fuel, Filler caps, they look grand, they look, they, like everything looks pretty sharp. You know, just as we'd expect really from Tamiya. We have our sprockets, again, very nice bulk detail on them sprockets. I'm not seeing anything that's causing alarm or concern on this kit, it, it all looks solid. And then we just have a few bags of parts. We have our HB machine gun, or 30 or 50 cal. Again, you, if you build any Tamiya kit, it's exactly the same gun. I'm not going to bother on bag that. It's, it's okay. It's not. It's a little bit dated now. They really need to retool that. I think I find. We get a bag of clear parts. Again, I'm not going to unbag these. So I don't want to damage them. So we get our lenses for our headlights. We get two pairs of goggles for the crew and some periscope lenses. We also get some nylon tread for our tow cable. I'm most curious to see if this actually works. I might actually try it on this kit to see do the nylon um, treads actually work for uh, steel tow cables. Just use it to the whole paint. It wouldn't be a Tamiya kit without some poly caps. I believe these are probably for the gun and for the idlers perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. 
And then we get our 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 deco sheet. So these were printed by Tamiya. I'm not going to open them again because I don't want the damp, damp to get to them. And they look pretty grand. Um, again, these are new decals. Some of the older Tamiya decals sometimes can disintegrate. Uh, we should not have this problem with such a new release. And that is the contents of the box. So that was my inbox review of Tamiya's M10 Tank Destroyer. It always looks like a very, very enjoyable and good kit. It should build up relatively quick. I'm looking forward actually weathering this thing off. I have some cool ideas, so do stay tuned in the near future when you might see this on the channel. I'll also have a link to scale modeling now if you're interested in going over. If not, just keep an eye out on the channel and we'll see this take shape in the near future. Also, I will have some more painting videos up in the near future. I'm just waiting on a few uh, like modeling supplies and uh, paints to arrive in the post. And once that's done, we'll uh, get cracking on some more painting videos. So thank you so much, guys. Happy modeling as always. Stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.